Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting with our assessors on December 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. here in the main meeting room in South Deerfield, Massachusetts. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person here in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with the Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So I'm calling the meeting to order at um, 5.02, and we will suspend public comment tonight because we have um, single agenda items. Well, we have a couple items on our agenda, but it is the fiscal 2024 tax classification hearing with our board of assessors. So welcome. Hello. Thank you for coming to our meeting. Is the hearing note? Yes. Um, do you want to read it, Trevor? Sure. Yep. Thank you. I've been talking too much today. My uh, voice. Before, uh, can we just have them read their read, see oh. who they are? Yes. yes. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. We should. Excuse me. Hi, yeah. Chuck Shattuck, um, Chair of the Board of Assessors. And uh, Skip Sobieski, Board of Assessors. And we 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 know you all so yeah. well, but yeah. we sometimes <laughs> forget that. So Those thank you. Don't. I know, right. but thank you. And you're, uh, you already called your meeting to order, so you're, yes, you're already yep. great. Perfect. So, um, okay, Town of Deerfield tax classification hearing. The Town of Deerfield Select uh, the Town of Deerfield Select Board will hold a classification hearing on December 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. to for the purpose of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy and whether all five classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or at different rates. Information and data concerning the physical effect of the available alternatives is open to the public inspection in the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., and on the town's website, www.deerfieldma.us. Um, interested taxpayers may review the material and attend the hearing. Written or oral statements from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing. Written statements will also be accepted prior to the hearing. Meetings being, being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the, eight, at, uh, in the meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. And the remote participation is the same as our original meeting. The toll-free number, if you'd like to dial in, is 833-548-0276. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. On the County um, Director website, you'll see a, a Zoom link where you can click on Zoom and join by Zoom and participate there as well. So welcome, everybody. Call the hearing to order. Hello. Great. Great. So tell us your work. What's that? Tell us your work. Well, well, sir, yeah, 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 so... Um, um, I, I guess uh, consistent with, uh, I'll say, at least since my involvement, and I'll say recent history anyways, we always recommend the single tax rate. Single tax rate is $13.85. Um, of course, you could choose a split rate. Um, just giving some of the numbers, you could have uh, residential at thirteen forty-two. dollars That would um, then increase the commercial uh, industrial to $15.24. Call it fifteen dollars and twenty-four cents. You could take that all the way down to about eleven dollars and sixty-nine cents on the residential, uh, but then that would increase uh, commercial industrial to about twenty dollars and seventy-eight cents. Um, again, just historically, we've always chosen and recommended the single tax rate. A couple of other quick notes: um, even though the tax rate has gone down, um, the average single-family home or um, average appraised values have all gone up. Gone up, I would say, for the single families. Uh, homes, the average has gone up roughly 50,000. Um, that's about a 5% wow. increase in average tax bills that's to be expected. So again, tax, tax rate going down, 
however price value is up. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty That's amazing. A huge jump in the last it's, two years. It's a significant increase. Yeah. The last year, um, 22 into uh, fiscal year 23 was about a 4% increase in average tax bills for single family home. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, historically, um, I don't, of all any classes I've taken, any webinars I've taken, it is all saying that you should have a single tax rate for a, you know, a vital um, community and it, and really the split tax rate is just to nail somebody on the way out. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that is not the kind of perception that we want to promote. Right. So I'm, I'm in favor of a single tax rate. I don't know if anyone else wants to discuss so, it. Um, I, I would just like to, for the audience, mm -hmm. ask general questions so that, uh, you know, if there is anybody here or will they, if they watch it in the future, they'll be able to hear a discussion. So yes. What is the amount of commercial property in town versus residential and or all other classes of property? So what burden would be, you know, be what percentage of the tax base would we be hitting if we had a split rate? Um, good question. I don't sit do we have seventy six percent is residential. Yeah, yep. Seventy six and a quarter. Seventy six versus twenty three point seven four. Yep. 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 So the commercial is twenty three. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's yep. correct. Yep. And that's a good mix for a town where we can yes. have residential and a good amount of, I mean, we're lucky to have some good commercial property, industrial property here in town paying, you know, paying, um, you know, considerable amount towards everybody's tax bill. And, and, we and we're not supporting. We're and we want, schools. yes, we yeah. don't want to chase anybody away. Right. Yep. And we want sure. to remain inviting. Yeah. Um, so the levy is thirteen million nine thirty five four hundred and twenty four dollars. That's right. And that's uh, approximately what percent increase from last year? In the levy, I think last year we were we we were like one. We were under the two and two and a half percent increase, if I'm correct. I think one eighty one point eight six or something like that. I don't know. My yeah, brain has yeah, numbers that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's 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 enough then. I I also agree that single tax rate uh, seems to be working for Deerfield, and um, you know we've gained businesses from communities that uh, don't have a single tax rate, and that's probably a contributing factor. Um, I would make a motion to approve. The single tax rate of thirteen dollars and eighty-five cents. We just—I think we got to close our hearing first, right? Yeah. And then, is there any other? Are we? Yeah. Questions? There... Any other comments? Any public comment? Anybody okay. online have any? I forgot we had to close the hearing. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, gonna... I just want to get on to other stuff. Yeah, okay. Any comments from you. See your cameras on. See if you need anything. Jack Davy was on too. Um, Jack doesn't look like. It's... No, he's you. muted up, but uh, okay. just didn't know if anyone had... Then I will make a motion to close the hearing. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S., aye. Um, I will make a motion to um, have a single tax rate of $13.85. And second. appreciate your work for doing this. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Um, the only question I had, uh, just in general, is um, how much capacity do we have under the our limit? Two and a half. I mean, are we like right up there? I think we're right up. We're usually right up there. Yeah, we usually there. have pennies. Oh, but we'll I just get to the limit. You know, I thought we we're right up to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Under, okay. Under, We're under, pretty under, close. Under, you did an excellent there. job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know, um, since we'll be talking about other things tonight related to roads. Um, okay. Thank you. So, okay. so I guess I have one question just on this classification options. They're talking total residential value net of exemption. Is that uh, res that's value that's not taxable That's right. in town? Okay. And that's... Um, Deerfield, Eagle, the schools. Yeah, et cetera. like yep. 76, um, 76 million dollars worth of value that is not taxable. Um, 
and then commercial and industrial value net of exemption is is um 176 million i'm trying to figure out what what entities that would be unless that's also you know school as well but um or am i got that's just right let's see you're looking at the small commercial exemption mm. 76.9 oh okay yeah and then and then residential is 767 million right so that's that's the tax um that's net of the exemption. taxable assessed value so i think it excludes the exempted that's property correct. i got you and then um and there we don't i guess deerfield we don't have a small commercial exemption so okay um yeah commercial exemption percentage is zero right right yeah. so um yeah where is where is the uh the large nonprofit uh communities uh represented on this chart i mean i know that we don't tax they them be, they okay. wouldn't be on this chart yeah, okay my understanding is there's there's close to 350 million dollars if not more, oh, if not more now of yeah. exempted property so more every year more, more every, every that's right single right. year that's correct yeah. right. we've got to figure out something to do about that because that is really rough yep okay thank you yeah really appreciate coming appreciate it one thing i was going to ask if you folks are able to is to give us an update on um the tip that we have with NuPro, just to you know give us an idea of where we are in the process and see how that's working um what is the you know i know they're in the process of building so how do you go ahead and determine okay it's 75 percent built what is it worth that must be a tough calculation uh or does patriot do that patriot for you does patriot. That. oh well that's a yeah. good thing it's a tough calculation. <laughs> yeah. um is, is that something that uh, karen could share with us at some point oh sure yeah definitely yeah, yeah. 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 and i think it was 35 percent um oh yeah. we can we, we discussed it last night but I, I was, yeah say it was yeah i think it was 35 percent complete if okay i have my numbers right but we can we can certainly get yeah, yeah just Happy to share. you yeah. know because the TIF is 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 set up so that uh, they get their biggest tax breaks in the years when they aren't really worth that much. So it's actually probably a a good thing for the town. Yeah. Um. It sounds really onerous when you look at it, but in five years, I think we're we're into the twenty percent range or something. Mm -hmm. Now we're at maybe one point three million assessment, and now what? I think you're right. I think it was like that's thirty five percent of the yeah. Yep. Yeah. That sounds about projected right. future, you know, value. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the tip was maybe seventy five percent for the first. Right. So seventy five percent of thirty five percent. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And this is another question you may not have the answer for, but um, we we've been discussing a possible purchase of some town owned land near the new pro property. Um, if they were to acquire that land, would it? be handled differently since it's real estate and it's not something that was covered by the original TIF? I wouldn't think that'd be Yeah, we'd probably have to write that in to just make make sure that we gave you a TIF on your original project and now you're buying more property and that's going to be treated normally. So, but that's a subject to negotiate with them as well. So, yeah, leave it to them. Okay, thank Great. you. Thank you, guys. I guess one other item that we don't need to discuss now, but just something to continue to think about is um, moving to quarterly versus the yes. twice a year billing. Yeah. Um, so I know that that's come up before, um, but you know perhaps we can schedule a time, you know, at an accessory meeting just to kind of talk through pros cons any you know yeah. concerns and considerations. Well, we were that, but, we, yeah. we were thinking of the estimated tax bill. Yes. Um, because um, so many people now um, have the mortgage payments, so to go from um twice yearly to the quarterly mm -hmm. it, it, people have to fix their mortgages and notify the banks and whatever but if we went to the estimated tax rate we could have a you know set time to send out um, that would, that would that, yeah and we wouldn't be two our estimated bills and then you oh so you would consider it quarterly okay yeah that's, that's correct okay yeah, first two are estimated based on the previous prior year Okay. Yeah. And then when the tax rate is done, everything's worked out. 
in the next two. Well, it's adjusted. Right? Okay. Yeah, I, I I was reading the legislation, and I think there is an option to do um, an estimated with still having a twice a year payment, but it it's a secondary thing because most people go to quarterly. But, um, you know, just so that we can put out tax bills and get tax revenue on a regular that it's it's schedule is hard on our uh, the staff. You know, Sarah's been, you know, like. Do yeah, we have I enough know. money yeah. in this year because we haven't had we had all that emergency expenditure go out for all the road repair? We haven't had the normal tax, you know, the money to pay and so uh, pay the bills. And so it's and then waiting on Patriot and uh, waiting on readings from sewer. And it's it's been a lot of nervousness yeah. this year. And so maybe if we spread it out a little bit, it might be. Uh, less stressful it, it should help with cash flow right it is you know we definitely would want to think through yeah i think know, it's worth the, having a meeting and just just to kind look of at the pros and cons of it all. yeah and if it's something that we would ultimately look to do i certainly take time to get through and i think yeah. it has to go for town vote etc so right you know even to start thinking about it now you probably wouldn't have it you know implemented for another year or two exactly anyways, so mm -hmm. just just you know yeah. wanted to throw that out introduce it as something to maybe it's consider. great well it's yeah good. because we were thinking about it for this town meeting um, cause we obviously have to have a vote, but, um, if we were doing it this town meeting that we would be able to give people time, not this round, but the next round. Prepare that. for it. Yeah. Adjust things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. People would actually like, I mean, yeah, for it. not mm -hmm. a big, not a giant. It, it evens field. out their cash flow as well. Right. So. Right. It's not such a large chunk, but it. I know it's always you at know, Christmas. It is. <laughs> <laughs> for those of us that don't pay yeah. uh, year round, right. yeah. but I, I just wanted to make sure because I had already gotten people w were worried that their um, more going to be impacted. Mm -hmm. how, how would they get that set up with the banks? And when you always have people that don't know what's going on, and you know, then all of a sudden that gets sort of you know. Yep. So we want to have plenty of time. To let people know about that. Yeah, so, understand. thank you. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you so All much. Thanks again. Have a great night. Great night. Thanks. Yeah, night. you too. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, next item on the agenda is um, we have select board announcements. I, I just want to have um, the people remember that the historic churches tour yep. is this Sunday. Um, eleven to three is the um. There's going to be a reception at this um John Paul Center in the down here in the yeah. middle of town, and that we've had always had lovely food in any of these events. Mm -hmm. So I um, I think it, it's very interesting, and people really should um participate. Now, the the one thing that um the friends of Deerfield had asked is is that we use a reverse 911 and i i know yeah what you all felt about we use the reverse 911 about the when we changed the fireworks and the mm -hmm. parade you know we had changes i i didn't know how you both felt if we if we did that again for the church tours it's sort of the, like the last event um but it's kind of a gray area because we don't when we do a general announcement, right? It's usually impact. We didn't even do it for the tax vote. No. I mean, for the road vote. Oh no, no. We usually don't. We just we practice. We usually do it for annual town meeting as a practice. Right. Um, but um, we don't even generally use it for special town meeting. So it's up to you. Well, I mean, I I don't know how you feel. Well, yeah, I I don't really think it's a good idea, but um, I do think. <laughs> Revisit the question of, you know, two or three weeks before a special election or a, or a special town meeting. We need we obviously one thing we've learned is we need to do a better job of telling people. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, and that's one of the few ways that if they've opted in, we know they got the message. Uh, you know, we can't rely on social media. A lot of people don't read the paper, so they miss all the stories about these things. Um, some people don't use social media, so they miss that. Um, you know, and we don't have a town crier. So, um, and, you know, a lot of people don't come to South Deerfield on a regular basis. So um, it's a tough thing, but people obviously want to know 
um, um, and get information about this stuff that affects their lives. So I, I think revisit it when we next time we have a special meeting or an annual town meeting and see how people respond. That would... So the consensus is not to do the reverse 911 is because it really is just emergency yeah i know okay i will let the friends of deerfield know but i i just wanted to encourage people to attend the um it's a wonderful opportunity to see yes. our faith community and the historic connections with the churches because it's all all our churches so it's it's very interesting um okay next item on the agenda is the fy 2024 sewer commitment it's the first half for review and um, uh, we are hereby authorized to collect from the 970 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $880,127.89 to pay over the monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and make a report of such payment to the town accountant. Second that motion. I don't know if you made the motion, but I'll make the motion. Um, okay, make the motion. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just read read the yep. amendment. And I'll uh, second it for discussion. Um, okay. I'm not seeing this. Is this because oh. it only exists in one form? Yes, it's yeah. only right. signed. Yep, go ahead. And then there's also, we also have to vote on the abatements, which are the, these are the automatic abatements, which um, customers pay no more than 125% of their previous winter usage because this this billing cycle is for last summer. So it's where people water the lawns and all that. So there's a list of automatic abatements um, totaling $44,889.14 that we'll, we'll vote okay. after this. Well, I was just going to say, we have a motion on the table for $880,127.89. Yep. So Yep. That. We have a second. Okay. And we have a second. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Trevor, you can make the motion for yeah, the, I'll make a motion uh, to, the abatements. Uh, seasonal, yeah, the seasonal abatements. Authorize the seasonal abatement. The select board, board hereby authorizes the abatements of the above sewer accounts for single family owner occupied properties of above 125% of their own winter consumption for the FY24 commitment number one, totaling $44,889.14. Is that, is that yeah, a motion? Was the motion. Yep. Okay, I'll second it. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on this? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'm sorry, I just almost signed the big thing. All right. Starting your tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I need to sign any of that? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yes, you That's do. Yep. And this you do. I just was looking at the abatements. It's it's the regular abatements. Okay. Um, we both have a tea in the frame. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. The second item on the agenda is request for approval to include informational material with um, property tax bills pursuant to general laws, chapter 60, section 3A, D. And this is actually, um, Cassie was hoping to put some information in to the real estate tax um, yeah. uh, because it won't cost any money really. Um, and this will be, uh, she'll have the 2024 election calendar. Yep. A reminder to license the dogs and a schedule, schedule in accordance to um, that 60, chapter 60, section 3A. Mm -hmm. um, and that will save money on the postage. Sure. So I think That's it's a great idea. Looks right. Um, I, you know, one of the th re things that we have to consider is what are we doing? Uh, that the vote hasn't passed mm -hmm. for um, to cover what money we've spent. And one of the things um, that I think we have to put on the table is that Kevin will not be able to hire contractors um, to do sidewalks. And um, I just don't see how he can have people. I mean, we can't pay for 
snow removal and stuff like that um, with contractors. We, we can do it with our highway department. Um, this is why that's such a stressful thing because if we don't secure contracts now for winter, by the time if we can figure out how to pay for this, we're not going to have well, any cash flow ability to, to uh, pay. Well, so ability to hire anybody if we do get a vote that passes. So I mean, we'll have to talk about this in a minute, but do well, you want to move forward with this? No, because what I wanted to do is put into this informational tax bill is that we are not going to be um, clearing the sidewalks this year mm -hmm. as an emergency. I mean, we just, Kevin yeah. was going to hire it and we right. can't hire out there's just, we have there's a no... lot to figure out what yeah we can't do i mean we have but uh, but this is an opportunity to pass the information out to people i mean because one of the things is all of a sudden we're not doing the sidewalks you know how people will get crabby about that mm -hmm. so i think we should support this i don't, I don't yes. have any problem but you this is also a... i just think we should add a little thing on the bottom here and say um be, given our financial situation, we will not be clearing sidewalks with an alert. Well, we have to do the um, a vote, right? There's a bylaw that we would pass. Well, we have to go take the bylaw to town meeting. But if we don't have the money to hire someone to clear the sidewalks, that's just a vote of the select board. The exactly. bylaw, the bylaw would is you're putting the bylaw in place because you're putting penalties for not clearing the sidewalk. Got it. And and I certainly want to make sure we have a waiver system. I mean, Cindy Majewski knows who our homebound seniors are, and we're not going to fine our homebound seniors and right. all that kind of stuff. So that has to be a thoughtful process, and we have to go to town meeting for that. Mm -hmm. But we as a select board can tell Kevin we're freezing all expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to tell the town people that, I mean, all department heads that we're yeah. freezing, we're freezing on hiring and freezing on expenditures. And one of the things we're freezing on is we're not going to hire contractors to clean the sidewalks. Right. right. But we, yeah. got, we should warn people about that. I mean, yeah. the winter's coming. Yeah. And I, I also, you know, I don't know. It would be interesting to hear Kevin's um, perspective on having, if we have to rely on our DPW crew to do all of the snow plowing of municipal roads, what is that going to mean for a, a mid-level storm? I mean, does that mean that we clean the main roads and then we do the uh, peripheral roads um, the next day or as possible? Um, you know, and what's required by law. I don't know the law on this, but, um, you know. You get your roads clean when they are clean. As soon as you can, as soon as you can afford it. Yeah, I mean, I basically, and and I know that we under budget for this because the state allows us to because of the vagaries of winter weather, um, but. You still have to pay the contractors. Right, and and so that's so, my point is that, like, if 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 we're relying more on contractors to clear our roads than we are on our DPW to clear our roads, then I'd like to know about that. Well, what we're going to do is just have the roads be cleared by our DPW. So the response time to road clearance is going to be less. Right. I'm, I mean, more, I mean, it's going to be a additional time, obviously. We're not going to be able to respond as fast. At, looking at the amount of shortfall we have, I mean, this is a, one drop in the bucket of how much oh, yeah. stuff we're going to have to cut this year to make to make th up three million dollars. Well, I mean, I was going to I was going to ask Casey to have the department down. Right. Well, I'm no, I'm going to have Casey um, talk to the department heads, including uh, there's nothing we can do about Frontier. That's an assessment, but we can talk to the elementary school. We can talk to the police and, and um, highway and all departments and say, what is a 20% cut going to do for you right now? Mm -hmm. What What is mandated? What do we have to deliver? What are we continually, I mean, what, and then how are we going to adjust? So we could come up with a few million dollars worth of cuts that are going to be, if this doesn't pass, if we reschedule tonight, I mean, we pick a date. And and that doesn't pass, then this is what's going to happen the next day. 
Mm-hmm. But we have to make some plans because we right. already know we have a cash flow issue. Absolutely. So you're not, we cannot commit to um, more contractors for like clearing the sidewalks. Right. Um, we can't commit to engineering. I mean, I'm really disappointed. Gonna we're going to miss. miss grant money. We're going to miss the deadline for Hawks Road, and we can't hire an engineering firm for Hawks Road because we're going to miss that deadline, and we're going to miss that deadline. So. You know, all the effort to match up the roads with what grant with grant money is is going to be shot. shot if we don't, you know, make an effort to get this passed. I most of the people that I've talked to, including Darius, he he just didn't think that it was going to be an issue. So he got mm-hmm. he was tied up with basketball, and he yeah. we didn't come and vote. People were busy, and and people were busy, and they didn't think it was an issue. So we just got to make sure that we impressed upon people that it's you got to come out and vote with less than ten percent return response of voters. Then you know that no wonder it didn't pass. It's it's a um, I, I'm not sure. I don't know how much people understood how vital it is because. You know, it's not money that we want to go. It's money that we have spent already and have not uh, to get emergency response and get, you know, these contractors came in on Saturday, Sundays, work through the night to get these roads open and then um, and then planning all the emergency stuff. I mean, if we went and did all of that work. In a plan thing, it would be five times as as expensive because absolutely in an emergency over. We um, oversized the culvert, not over, but upgraded the culvert size to handle the amount of water coming off. I just, you know, I'm not sure. I think people maybe thought we were getting this money to plan on doing all these things that we always wish to do. It's paying the bills because if we don't pay these bills, like we have to cut $3 million out of everything else. And we run the town on four or five for a whole year. Yes. So right. you're talking 75% of your budget cut in right. the next six months. Yeah. That yeah. means closing town hall for days on end. It means one day for, for dump service. I mean, there's, it's not hiring anybody else, but letting people go. I mean, you, if you don't have the money to pay the bills, you don't have a choice. It's not the federal government where you can just create a deficit. You have June 30th. If those bills aren't paid, you are in serious trouble. I and I don't, th- yeah, I don't think that, uh, you know, I think that two things were played possibly. One was um, residual, you know, uh, unhappiness with uh, the fact that we we're going to build in the library expansion. And, and there's a solid core of people in town who don't believe anything other than roads and public safety should be mm-hmm. considered. Um, and there was a low turnout issue because I think a lot of po- people who went to the special town meeting saw that it was unanimously approved. And just they, about, they just yeah. didn't turn out. Um, and I don't think they understood the underlying issue, which is we're using general fund money to pay for an emergency that we didn't plan for. And it's in the two point five to three million dollar range currently. And so that means that two point five to three million dollars of general fund money is not available to pay for the things that we pay f- for to run the town and to del- deliver public services like um, you know, the, the transfer station, which is mm-hmm. subsidized, like, you know, snow removal from sidewalks, uh, and numerous other things. So, um, I don't think I did a very good job of trying to explain this to people who talk to me. So, mm-hmm. um, I think if we schedule another vote, we need to do uh, a very good job of explaining this is why we need this to happen, not mm-hmm. because we're going to spend five million dollars, but we're we're going to have the ability to pay bills beyond, you know, um, robbing the general fund the, and cutting services. The other thing I think that's important to get across is that um, when you authorize five million dollar borrowing it doesn't mean you're borrowing five million automatically 178 dollars is added to everybody's average bill for 20 years for 20 years that's not how it works it gives you an authorization to borrow up to we physically never are going to borrow up to that because we're hoping for some state help we have no clue that amount will be way below 
what we need. It just is because there's so many people in need and there's 15 million across the whole Commonwealth um, to pay for those emergency issues. So there's no way it could cover all of our expense. We knew that and we, we would, you know, we're trying to be frugal in what we're doing, but um, we're only going to borrow what is necessary uh, right away. So it's not like we're, you know, and then hopefully by this spring, we would rescind any borrowing we don't need. It's really a cash flow thing to get through this year because this was just unprecedented. Uh, yeah. And I mean, this is a lot worse than Irene. And generally, when we handle grants, um, you know, when I've worked in the past on road repair, it's been one or two. Mm -hmm. We're talking six or seven. Yeah. Major. And major ones. And and this is, I mean, this is significant. And and you got to match them up to see which is the, the best match for us. Some of them, like Mass Works, hopefully would not be a match. I mean, require a match. Right. But the Little Meadow Road is going to be an EWP project. That's a 20% match. Right. It was, you know, it's probably almost a million dollars. So guess what? That's 200,000. Yep. You know, and and you have to have engineering um, initially for like the Mass Works grant. The uh, EWP money, they will work with us and they provide the engineering. And, and they handhold us through the whole process. So yes, there's a 20% match, but we don't have to do anything else. Mass works, you've got to have the engineering, you have to have the solution. I mean, and and we're being- And these aren't even guaranteed. And these aren't even guaranteed. Grants are not right? Right. Right. The best But you're kind of fronting this you money, can. right? You're fronting the money so you can put the application together. And put your best foot forward Right, together. I mean, the brick grant's going in because that's almost done, but- What's happening is we're we're going to miss out on the Hawks Road one, and I, and we got to get this our act together so we can apply for the six hundred four B and the three nineteen, which looks like it's going to be at the end of January or the first week of February deadline, and you know it's, it's a ton of work has been done already. We we you know um, Deerfield River was was you know not a priority watershed. I got it so that it can be a priority voted as a priority watershed so we can apply for this stuff. That was major work this summer. Mm -hmm. And and we've got it because of all the silt coming down from Wapping Road. And we've got the railroad, um, Deep Mass DOT Railroad, able to work with us. They, they took, Kevin toured with them three hours on Monday. They're willing to work with us and partner all along that, you know, Pleasant Road and, I mean, Pleasant Street and Depot Road and all that, mess yeah and it, i mean there's like 20 more than 20 spots on the railroad that are washing out and so they're going to work with us to figure out the water situation which is what we need to do we and that's water. a huge yeah it's a huge engineering question it's like how do you address right. the watershed all along the 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 railroad obstructs the normal flow of right. water in a lot of places and um you know, you can see if you walk the railroad tracks, you can see areas where the the railroads, uh, the rails are deformed. They're yeah. sinking over long stretches. And uh, it, Amtrak it's, is it, they're on a reduced speed. Right. So the railroad, I mean, and that's not our money. We're not. That, no, yeah. no. Yeah. But we're partnering. Yeah. Right. We're right. partner with their engineering. But we've got to be able to have some flexibility to respond when we you know, have, have an area. Cause there's, there's more than 20 areas. There's like 26 or 27 areas in the town of Deerfield alone yeah. that are, you know, washing out. And then it's that culvert just above Wapping Road that is problematic. So, you know, we're trying to deal with this kind of stuff and to have no flexibility um, to work with anything is really tough. So that's, and that's, yeah. I yeah, I don't so, know. It's it's a lot like when in 2019, when the first boat for the sewer failed, we spent the summer explaining to people the necessity and the need, and and we got an overwhelming vote after. So, right. Yeah. And the only the only challenge we have here is, you know, we we need to do that relatively soon. Yeah. So we're going to need to condense the educational effort yep. and also, you know, work to make people understand that they need to come out and participate even if they vote no again 
if we get 50 percent of the voters to come out and they still vote no then we know we know that you know a large portion of the population is participated in this and it's a real at less than 10 percent of voters it's not Sorry. A, the town doesn't support do i can hear what they're talking about oh kevin can hi you, Kev. yeah um so casey um along those lines hey. Do you have a date for us that we can um, talk about for scheduling dates. another or dates? So I did have a conversation with the town clerk. This would be very tight. So the deadline by which you have to have a vote based on the requirements from the date of town meeting, you have to have your debt exclusion vote done by 90 days from your town so meeting. So it's like January 20th. That's January 20th. Okay. Um, but you also need to give the clerk 35 days notice to be able to prepare not only the ballots, but the machines. And she has uh, 10 days because this was so close. And so there's the reason I wanted to talk to Cassie about that today is because I don't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I didn't know is you have to have a 10 day period um, to allow for a request for a recount. And part of that, <clears throat> excuse me, is connected to the disks that are used in the voting machines. So that can't be turned, you can't send that to the vendor mm -hmm. to program the ballot until after you pass that deadline. Okay. Um, and that so that's a question that Cassie has, and she's following up on that. Great. Um, we also would need to take into account early voting. So yeah. again, she's actually been conferring with some of her colleagues and plans to get back to me. Now she's out at a training tomorrow. Okay. So what I did do, what I did when I was talking to Cassie was try to get an idea of when, if there's questions I don't know to ask, I wanted to have the ability to talk to council to make sure that we cover our bases. Yeah, of course. And I did leave a message. Cassie was with me, left a message for council. I will follow up. Um, the, the question really is if you wanted a date, um, it really falls. So if the deadline is the 20th, you're really looking at the week of Martin Luther King Jr. Day week, that week. The, um, the 15th is a holiday. So the next day is a Tuesday and that would be the 16th. Yeah. Um, so that was what she and I initially discussed. Keep in mind that the yeah. MMA conference is at the end of the week. Right. So I think um, short of us having firm answers for you. Let's kind of plan on that date. But if and, and well, the only thing that I'm concerned about and, is that if we need the 10 days between the ballot boxes, we don't have a chance to do a second date. We're not going to have a second date anyways. We won't so, be able to hit a second date because that yeah. deadline okay. is the 20th. So, so we're, we're agreeing it's that's this it. one. If it doesn't pass, pass that, we'll bring it back to town meeting. Mean, and so like, just understand, this would be a huge undertaking yeah. because you also have three... Um, I, I just want to make sure everybody understands this. This is some of the conversation I had. Yep. So you've got three holidays between now and then. Yep. And Cassie and I wanted to give ourselves a little bit of time to sort of get some of these answers for you. Um, that being said, I thought you guys might want to consider doing another request for a special election. Yep. So I did reach out to everybody and tell them that, um, we could plan on and post for a meeting on Friday at two 30 to talk about this. Um, I told Cassie that as well. Okay. Um, just because we plan a meeting doesn't mean it necessarily happens, but it does give Cassie and I a little bit more time to be able to outline everything. And I will tell you, she's working on a timeline. So you have a firm, so you have firm information. Um, but again, she's out at a training tomorrow, so that's she'll be able to produce that for us yeah. a little bit after no, that. No, that's think. okay. I I think there's consensus that we'll we'll try to go for the 16th then. But let's hear what. Yeah, let's, I mean, you know, if, let's if, hear what could you come up with and have a meeting so Friday and see what I if, posted the meeting. Yeah, right. And it's um, Zoom. It's a hybrid, so okay. that you can both be because if you did do the special election, if you did call it, you would need to sign the warrant so that Cassie could then work with the constables to get it out. Yeah. Um. But that only means two people have to sign that warrant. Right. So road, if two I people can can sign okay. that, conversation. Um, that, okay. that gives her the ability to do that. I just want everybody to be aware that we're still chasing information. And that's understandable. Yeah, so we'll find out Friday. So it is posted for we'll Friday at 2.30.
Okay. okay. That's good. Yeah, I've got fine. it in my calendar. Yep, that's fine. We'll make the decision. Um, but hopefully this... 2.30. Okay. 2.30. Yeah. And hopefully we'll pick the 16th. Yeah, um, see, see if it works. So that, that was the date that we talked about. I mean, it could be the 17th. I right. think if you get further yeah, into that... flexible. I just want to know what, what the limitations are, oh. what the lift is. Actually, I'm not flexible. We need to take care of this. No, so. I, what I'm saying is I'm flexible oh, okay. on those dates. 16 or 17. Be, yeah. yeah. So Typically... Just, Deerfield holds, a, there's two days that Deerfield usually uses, either a Monday or a Tuesday, because most of the state and, and federal elections are Tuesdays, and the town election is a Monday, but Monday is a holiday that yep. this time we needed, our timing had to be using yesterday's date um, so that we had a clear path for certain um, dates. Yep. to to hit certain dates. So when I looked at it, I counted out to the 16th and I, that's, I sort of, I wanted to talk to Cassie before I said too much more because right. I wanted to get her okay. feedback. And I don't, like I said, I don't know what I don't know. So we, we had to have that, a conversation. That's fine. I, and, and the reason why I was pressing you through email about hosting the meeting is not because I knew a specific date that we needed, but we needed to obviously host the meeting so that we could make a decision based on the research you were going right. to do in the interim. So I'm right. glad that we're posting the meeting. That's great. Yes. Right. Yeah. We know you got. So I out. sent it to postings as soon as she and I were pretty much done. All right. Um, so that's up. Um, Carolyn, did you want to go back? So Cassie had sent you that request. Do you want to go back and vote to approve adding that additional material? Yes. And, but I, I mean, since we're not going to even get um, another vote, I mean, if the earliest vote we're going to make is January 16th, I think we need to notify people. I mean, obviously, we're going to have some snowstorms, so we need yep. to put in here. Well, I would. So can I make a suggestion? This is very much geared toward dealing with people, uh, dealing with um, licensing. Um, and and I think if you add other things to that, it's going to confuse people. So I, it might be worthwhile just leaving that alone and we could maybe send out postcards or something no because the, casey that's in, in in that's costing money i know but i don't if if it confuses people it could be detrimental to what cassie's trying to do there is some law requirements over what goes in the tax bills right or the um the election stuff no so sarah we um start. we can just stop with regards to this sarah worked with cassie on this um to develop something that I, because they looked the law up and they had discussed it. And Cassie told me that they, she had worked with Sarah about this. Um, as far as information that goes out to the public. Wait, you're right there. <laughs> for, um, for a, about an election, there's different things to take into account. And I had sent you guys um, a PowerPoint that, Chris and I saw when we went to the STAM meeting right after in October, right after town meeting. And so from a legal perspective, there's certain things that elected officials can say, and there's certain things that have to be presented differently from staff. Mm -hmm. So for the, for purposes of, you know, what gets said and how it gets said, that's, that's a larger conversation. But what I just want to be careful about is that if Cassie can preserve exactly what she wants to say in this, it'll be more clear for residents. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I think that it would be much more effective to send out a single specific thing about the special special election and make sure that we're not that we're explaining but not advocating. Um, I don't know what the fine line there can be. Um, and and I think it, you, you put it in here with six other items and I can guarantee you that people are just going to read over it. That they get this in there. They they still act, you know, well, presidential primary, March 5th, you know, um, and they get all kinds of public uh, and, you know, news related tips on this, but they won't get it from here. But I feel like we have to notify people that we are not going to do the the sidewalk mm -hmm. this year. That's, that's a huge change. Yeah, I mean, well, we can certainly. Uh, I have no public safety is a is a legitimate use of the the phone system, right? You know, and you know maybe we do one ahead of the of the first heavy snowfall, and then when the the snowfall comes, we do another one. 
Why don't you let us talk about that? Mm -hmm. Um, Just because I, I, and I, I'm not saying we shouldn't do something, Carolyn. All I'm saying is if we do a little bit of research, maybe we can help it be more effective. I know you want to tell people that. I get that. I, I think you need to let people know it's not mm-hmm. fair that people are not prepared. Well, none of us are saying that we want to be unfair to people. I mean, I know we I have know. Chris Larrabee from the recorder online and and this is a big deal. Yes, we're not going to be cleaning the sidewalks. And so I'm sure he's going to mention that in a story that he writes about this. <laughs> and I will make every effort to post it on Deerfield now so that at least those and people are aware website. of it. And the town website, we need to do a better job I of know. putting these things on the town website in a way that they are meaningful to people. People don't visit the town website until after the fact right. um, anyway, but it should are, be easy to see these things. We are going to need to schedule some more time though to talk about that's one small aspect this is a massive shortfall so we're going to have to talk about well how we, we're going to be yeah able to we, need to, plan, this, we need to plan we need to plan that we'll have yeah. to get a, a, a meeting and just kind of go through pull out that budget book what was budgeted and what what totals you know three million bucks right <laughs> it's going to be painful yeah but you know but hopefully I don't, we're going to have to do some to start with. Okay, so let's we won't vote. Know until... Let's vote on Cassie's thing, and okay. um, I, 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 I make because a... it's so difficult to reach people. I still want us to consider putting another stuff. Okay, there. I'm going to make a motion to approve Cassie's voting yes. calendar as written. Yep, I'll second that motion with a attention dog owners on the back. Yeah, yep. all stuff. those in yep. favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then we'll find a solution to notifying people about. Yeah. And I agree with Trevor. We're going to need to have a meeting that just focuses on. I wanted a preliminary um, people to show up preliminarily next week. Um, we we need to figure out some. Yeah. Your your request for, for department heads to come up yep. with cuts. Yeah. So you want me to send that out as soon as. Yes. Hiring freeze, spending freeze. Um, uh, you know. And and looking for around twenty percent, and and that we can't obviously that doesn't count for assessments like Frontier's assessment, Skems's assessment, but Absolutely. but it does include the elementary school. It does include all our departments like police and fire. I mean the uh, police and uh, highway, town clerk, our our office. Nothing you can do about that. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is: Do we have the settlement for the um, replacing? The it's trees. in the replacing yes. the trees. signature. Yep. Okay. It's in here. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the the um, settlement for tree replacement at one forty four Sunderland Road. Yes. Um, do we have a second? I'll second for discussion. Okay. And um, do we feel like? Uh, we could have a brief synopsis of what we're doing here. Yeah, we well, I, I could give a quick run. Yes, please. So um in putting the new uh sewer plant in, uh there's a two or three rows of pine next to the headworks building. Uh there was an understanding that most of those trees were planted by the town when the when the um Sewer plant came in, and our original Weston and Sampson plot plan showed those first row of trees on our property. We cut them down when we when they were getting close to the. Um, we didn't want them falling on the new Headworks uh, building, and we had plans to work with the next door neighbor to um, to build the berm and make sure there was some privacy between the new new facility and and the um, and their property, and so. Uh, after that was done and a little more a set when we did more surveying for the fence, we realized that 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 row of trees, we must have probably got approval from the everybody's previous owner to put trees on that because there were three rows of pines. Nobody really knows the history from back in the early 70s when all that happened. But um, so we need to pay to replace those trees and we're going to build a little berm and kind of do do some well, work there. Intend- and this is this is um, giving us approval to go on the property and. Casey's working on some some MOU language. Waterline will have and it already has an excavator down there to pull the stumps. Um, and they they offered to just do that. They said we got the machine here. 
but they wouldn't want they didn't want to do it until they had the MOU signed that it's okay to go on that property. So all of this is just kind of getting that approval to replace that row of trees. And um, and this is a, this is a, a, an agreement between us and the uh, property owner that this the the amount that we're expending is the total sum that we're going to correct outlay to solve this problem. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, it needs to be signed by the chair. So okay, I'll make a motion to um, have the settlement um, between the town of Deerfield and um, and uh, Megan Blaney. One Megan Megan Blaney. Uh, one forty four Sunderland Road, Deerfield, Mass. And I authorize the chair to sign. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then if you let me know when that MOU is yep. good, I can just let them waterline know that they could yep. pull yep. the stumps and then we'll get everything else no, ready. Trevor sign that? No, um, we have to, there's a letter of support for the uh, Massachusetts Broadband Institute. This is oh. hopefully to get, um, you know, our underserved areas like uh, Sunset, uh, Juniper Drive and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of other areas that have no internet. So, um, I Correct. will make a motion, right? I'll make a motion to approve this. Okay. Sending a letter of support. support yes. Letter of support to the Broadband Institute. And, mm -hmm. and it's it's supporting Verizon's application. Application to the MPI. Underserved. Yeah. For a pro program. And I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda. Oh, um. Bob is going on vacation, and we we don't have a building ins alternate building inspector yet. So well, we need to approve Dick. He's had. So years. I've asked I've asked Bob several times. I will ask him again. You have an opportunity to take another vote. Um, okay. Well, put it on the agenda for next week because I will. It's I think it's already there. I think Chris already has it in there. Um, and I did ask him. Um, so I will follow up with him again tomorrow. All right. Just make sure we got to we got to have somebody. Okay. So we're we're not going to have a vote tonight about appointing Dick. Assistant. No. No. I guess not. So we'll put it off till next week. Okay. Um, well, I also just want to thank Dick Kalashevsky for the service he does to the town, particularly with regard to septic systems. Yep. Um, he helps everyone when they have a problem, and I, after many years in town, had my problem, which Dick came out and helped resolve so uh, thank you dick yeah it was pretty amazing um he does that for everybody which is wonderful yeah. um is there anything else casey that you wanted us to address that uh between now and next week well we did have um the recommendation for the senior center program coordinator um but in light of that conversation i don't know how to talk to you about this Okay. Um, we had gone through a an interview process, and Chris, thank you very much, <laughs> wrote up the recommendation. It is a staff member that um, the director relies on, but based on our, our your earlier conversation, I I honestly don't know what to ask at this point because it's it's a difficult if if we're asking all our departments. The issue is is this is. This is a regional service and it's supported in other ways. She actually has grants to cover this stuff, some of this stuff. Um, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, because it isn't, there's grants and there's other funding sources, it may not be as much of a financial pinch for that particular issue. On the other hand, I, I don't want to gainsay anything I heard you guys talk about earlier. Um, why don't we put it off until next week? And that gives us some time to, Figure I can check with Brenda we're about it. Because she does have a grant that may cover some of this. And, and it I, it used to cover all of it. So um, we're going to have to ask her for um, some budget cuts anyway. So you can ask her how she, you know, the impact on this okay. funding. Okay. All right. Um, this might be what she would want to hold off on as you know as be her budget cut okay so why don't you talk to her yep. and we, we can make a decision for next week is that 
to everybody? Yeah, I was just looking for the letter that was um, referred to. You know what? I I know Chris emailed it, but he I may don't. Have emailed it, and I did, it's not in the packet. I before. don't think I didn't realize I needed to print it. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I I think I looked at it earlier, and I just wanted to ref, refresh. I my can memory. print it, and, and uh, it's it's not important. We're not going to vote on it tonight, anyway. Nope. Okay. Um. So, Trevor, yes, I just want to add a couple of things for next. Um. Yeah, they're not on the agenda, but I just wanted to bring up. Um, so we had our sewer meeting today, the monthly meeting number 30 down at the plant. Um, I'll just give a quick update on that. They're, um, they're getting very close. They have one more concrete pour on Tuesday uh, for the North Eurasian tank, I believe. And um, they're going to go down. I think Waterline's going down with a seven-man team next week and then a five-man team. And then they'll be out of their for Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's. Um, they all take vacation anyways. Um, but they will come back sometime in January. They'll be out of there for a little bit. They'll come back sometime in January when the chair, chair rails come in, the railings and stuff have to come in. So they'll have a little bit more work in January and then they'll be out of there completely until spring when they can do final cleanup and final punch list they're already knocking out most of the punch list they're about 96 percent done oh that's so, so exciting it is really exciting Very i would much love so. for the spring to have a as i mentioned have a um an open house so people can really see what what we've done there um i think um uh, so so there was so there's that uh good meeting today on that believe it or not we're still trying to get the motor the grit removal motor fixed so it's back at it's still at the suppliers whatever so we've held all the money back so we can go buy another motor but that would just again take more time we're fine without it at the moment but um they thought they would hear in the next couple days and i said oh so an update next next month on where we're at and he said no it should be in a couple of days so i think in the, in the next week or so we should have that back and fixed or we're just going to go buy a different grip motor so so is grit getting into the motor? Is the motor just not running properly? Uh, no. So what the, this motor does is uh, remove some grit that comes into the system. Um, we've never had grit removal before in this system, so we just we still don't have it. But this new thing that we put in the Headworks building will pull out that like fine sand, gravel and yeah, stuff, right. sand and and all of that. So um, it'll be nice when it's done. It's just for some reason the motor comes on and then shuts off. Comes on, shuts off. Yeah, so for some but it's reason, not the actual grit removal portion of it. It's the motor that runs the it, It's the machine. motor that sucks out the grit. Yeah, but it's a motor sits over here, and then there's an attachment to it where the grit goes through and gets Correct. sucked out. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's the motor that does that yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, for some reason, not not coming on and staying on. Um, so then the other couple of things is um, DPC and Eric Niels have been talking with um, DEP about uh, a couple of things. So we had our full inspection from DEP and what we've, there's only two areas that we need to address. One of them is uh, BBC and the amount of load that they're putting in. They, uh, DEP wants to, um, and I don't have all this nailed down, so I'll talk about it more in depth later, but there is, they need to classify them um, as, as an industrial user because of the amount of load, I think, there's a couple of uh, criteria that make them an industrial user. Um, we don't have them classified that right now. The fee uh, that they're paying should be about four times what they're paying right now um, based on what DEP's input is. And because they're about 40% of the load that goes into that plant is because of that one entity and how much uh, BOD they add into the into the stream mm -hmm. so there's they would their dep is requiring them to have they're not i don't believe they're going to require them to pre-treat but they're going to require because we can handle it at the plant but they're going to require um testing three times a week and specific locations that they test we need to have a um an agreement with them it's a engineering um it's a it's an agreement to be an industrial user I don't have all the terms with me at the moment, but I do have a proposal for from DPC that they will write up all that agreement, get it all sent. Go ahead. To your point, 
Yeah. Um, this would be a this information would be good to be incorporated into regulations that still have to be promulgated. Bingo. So Put if it's in up. that, if it's in that, that would I'm be great. Give this to you, Casey. Uh, yes, it, he also mentioned that you know he has draft stuff there that he would like to put all together as well. And and because there, that was the other thing that DEP wanted to see is our regulations right. and all of that stuff done up, and um and you know the teeth that we have to implement. Yeah, and we need to get that. those promulgated anyway because we've got uh, those time frames we have to hit. Exactly. So 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 I'll leave this with you, and thank everybody you. can share it and see it. Um. So so it's getting that squared away, and then the other item was um. Because our plant is is. Uh, can handle over a million gallons per day. Um, there, there is a different level class that the plant should be classified at, but, but David thinks that he can, and he has talked with DEP a bit, but he thinks that he he can write a letter explaining why some parts of the plant have the capability to manage a million gallons. The plant is not classified for a million. It's it's a, it's um. I mean, a hundred thousand. It's um, it's like eight hundred and something thousand. So yes, it's below a million gallons. So, um, and and I think everybody can agree to that. So I think he he needs to. He was asking if he wanted us to write that letter for us, evaluate it, and then and then send it in on on our behalf. We have the ability later on to manage a plant, but right now we do not, and we are not managing. We're around half a million. Yeah. So, on an average, um, certainly it can go higher, but it's not, um, it's not anywhere near a million gallons a day. So um, that, that reminds me, thank you for reminding me. Sure. Um, I, in a meeting yesterday I was in, um, uh, EPA is coming out with a new permitting, which is related to that. Yeah. So that's why we ac absolutely have to get that letter out before, um, the permitting changes mm -hmm. because, um, we want to make sure we're not classified as an MS4 community. Right. Um, and that will be one thing that we need to have Christopher Dunn address if we have to tweak any of our stormwater regs to meet, meet the new requirements. So he'll have to work with the planning board on this because, um, you know, the problems with the MS4 in Northampton were just horrible. So we don't want to, to, especially with now our sewer treatment plant operating correctly, right. we want to make sure that we get our letters in there and and that we also not get picked up as an MS4 community. Right, and that is really critical because that will cost every single downtown sewer user a ton of money. Right, and it, it's really that that is an expense. We fought it off, you know, almost. I think it was two thousand eight or nine when we whenever we did our stormwater regs. That right. was a result of pushing back on not becoming an MS4 community. So you put the regs in it. Yeah, we control, we control. And and the whole town came out and voted for that because it was going to be a gigantic expense for people. Yeah. So again, we need, if we have to tweak the stormwater bylaws, we need mm -hmm. to be on that before that all happens. So, right. so um, is this something where we're going to need to authorize, um, you know, Christopher Dunn working directly with, the planning board chair and and our legal counsel to to look at this stuff it it's gonna it's it's from my understanding the new permitting they're, they're coming out with their new permitting in february ish so it's something that he has to keep an eye on and if we are have a chance of being picked up we need to figure out how we're not going to get picked up well, this is my question is, okay, so we have between now and February before these new things come out. Oh, yes. Is there anything that we need to do now, knowing what these preliminary regs are, and who would know that information? In other well, words, so we sure. can't wait until the regs come out and then try to retroactively fix no, something. No, 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 but he could, we don't know what the new, they haven't, it's going to be based, it was based on the old 2000 census. Now they're going to do it on the 2020 census. And we've been pretty stable population. Yeah, so, right. so we, I'm hoping we will be under the radar, but it's something that he just has to get on the, be aware of and be, and, and make sure that if the planning board has to do something, 
then it, it happens. Right. We don't know uh, if we're going to be classified yes or no, but the idea is to avoid it. And MS4 means what for the public? Uh, yeah. I knew you were going to ask me that. It's, it's has to do with <laughs> it has to do with water discharge. That's why I was thinking a, a next maybe a, a meeting coming up shortly. We could discuss this mm -hmm. um, and have a discussion on all this, and maybe Pull in DPC could give some. Advice that might be a good idea yeah, because then it, have... it'll be informative it for all of us. Stormwater, yeah. right? Right. Stormwater stuff. And exactly. That, maybe we could you know ask some you know Christopher Dunn to sit in on that meeting just mm -hmm. so he yeah. so he just needs a little background so that he can work with the planning right. board right. to tweak our regulations because yep. we were able to skate by before and I, I'm hoping we will do right. the same thing. Yeah. By adopting the regs, that's how we did it. Right. One thing I did want to, I, I think we both, we all received something from the energy committee. I, I think about um, some new opportunities to get grant money to actually in, install solar panels on certain buildings. Hey, David Keith, question. Um, the Energy Committee, I think, sent us a notice about um, possibilities for getting solar panels installed on municipal buildings. Is that something that's real? Yes. Okay. Yes, and because I was going to suggest that uh, we t talk to the Energy Committee about um, look looking with Eric Meals, our sewer plant director, to see if any of the structures down there would be eligible for grant funded solar panels because it's a big energy suck down there. So just put that on your radar. All right. All right. <laughs> In addition to the free solar tracker we have. Right. Yeah, he was talking about that today. He's excited to get that going. Good. Before you guys go. Yeah. Um I had just said something to Carolyn. Carolyn, I will help you um, finish the the um, checks that you have to do in Gateway. I oh. actually have it ready for right. you to do this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so after the meeting, before you leave, sit with me. But I had a question. It was actually something Chris mentioned to me. So you formally haven't had, haven't really, A, I haven't sent an email out to anybody about the potential financial impacts of us not having the vote passed yesterday mm -hmm. and what that means to budgets. Right. But B, we've had hiring processes that were ongoing. And <clears throat> in one case, which is the program coordinator, um, I did get confirmation a couple minutes ago that this particular position is grant funded. Mm -hmm. So then it that, can be, that'll be fine. It's fine. It, it, fine. Does, it wouldn't affect the general fund. Right. We're but talking about general fund general money. Fund. So there's one other thing that comes to mind, and it's something that we had a planning meeting about, a group of us today, and that's the assistant town clerk's position. Um, we're asking the clerk to do a lot in the next six weeks. So, and if we could move quickly on this, it would get her more help. Um, it might be something that before you guys come down with definite um, votes, it might be something that you take into account because you're asking for that kind of um, just that kind of time and effort. So I'm just asking you to consider it. I'm not asking. I, I realize we need to be equitable with everybody, but there's a huge push to get through these special elections. And frankly, they've been working with one person for almost a year. I know. Um, so just my two cents worth. But okay. so since to go back to the, the program coordinator, since this is grant funded, would the board be willing to vote to appoint um, yes. Thomas Patria? I have a question. Um, so, do you want is, me to print that letter for you, Tim? I can't. This is a year-over-year year grant. So, what happens when the grant doesn't get renewed? We can make that a condition. Yeah, um, we do. We make but a condition. It this is, is this is a grant that. Correct me if I'm and I. There's two grants that she uses. One's the SIG grant, and one's a different grant. And generally, the program coordinator was paid for out of the was, not out of the SIG grant. It was out of the other grant. Right. Do you remember the name of it? Uh, is it the formula grant? Well, the formula fund is is generally what I, I 
could pull the budgets from last night's meeting. We had a boo meeting last night. As long that as it's might a condition, have I don't help care. Him. Yeah. I just know that it's great. I was yeah. sure I was pretty sure it was grant funded, but I wanted to ask Brenda to do that because we I mean, we've always had it's Sue's old position and we've had that for 15 years. Okay. It's always been funded by that grant. So um, um if you want yeah, to give me a sec, I can check I, with I, Brenda. Yeah, I don't. I don't need you to print anything out for me. I. I and, and I, I just wanted to make sure that it's it was grant, you know, dependent, yeah. and so therefore it should be. And the only other question I had, and I'm sure the boo looked at this was, um, you know, the, there's been, and this is probably regular. There's been a fair amount of. I don't know if this is. I can't tell experience whether that's work experience or it's college experience or it's both. It just seemed like there was a lot of short-term employment and maybe that's the nature of this kind of job. So some of that, my impression is, and maybe, maybe Chris has a different thought, but in some cases when you have grant funded or or positions that may not be funded, like you said, okay. for long periods of time that necessitates a change. Yeah. Chris, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, it's a, it's a part-time pos uh, position in the field of senior services. So um, positions like that, I think, tend to have a pretty high turnover rate across different organizations um, would just be my reasoning for that because ordinarily yes it is a bit of a red flag to see a lot of change on somebody's resume but he's covered a lot of ground i think um and i, I touched on some of the experience that mr patria has in the memo that i wrote okay that's fine i'll, I'll take a motion it is, it is kind of fun to do like yeah good formula fund so yeah i'm fine and we have received that over a period of time so you want me to print motion. you the memo no that's okay was, we did it. email it but i yeah, no, didn't I, realize i, I, I did see it, it. I did read it. Okay. So. Um, can you make a motion then, Tim? Um, I I just put away a gentleman's <laughs> name. So let me see. Is it uh, Thomas Patria? Yeah. Thomas Patria. Yeah, I make a motion that we uh, appoint, uh, approve the appointment of Thomas Patria uh, to work in the programs, programs uh, for the South County Senior Center okay. um, and, and dependent on grant funding continuing second that motion all those in favor tim hilchi aye Trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s aye would you also vote to have um me finalize the hiring process uh, yeah. with jennifer make a motion to uh authorize casey warren to um handle a final job offer with in coordination with the senior center uh coordinator Director, Director and Chris. Jennifer. Yeah, and, and Chris Thank Nolan. You. Thanks. Second. All those in favor? Milchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you. You. So did I actually, I had a conversation with Keith, uh, with, with David Keith Gilbert about this coordinating with the South, uh, the, the, the wastewater treatment plant and Eric Meals on potential yeah. solar panels. I think that would be good. Sure. Um, there's, oh, a lot I, of, there's a lot there's a lot of good real estate on those roofs there is and that, that will lower the operational costs mm -hmm. tremendously yep um so i think that's wonderful okay sounds good i'll take a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion second all those in favor Tim Hill, G. I. trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye thank you everybody thank you.